So if you're just getting started in the world of investing in real estate, chances are you're running into different terminologies, vocabularies, and words that might be quite overwhelming or confusing, at least. You know, words like NOI, ARV, LTV, DSCR. I mean, there's so much words to know. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a very clear and concise, fully unpacked, terminologies, vocabularies that you need to know as a real estate investor, not only to just be able to carry conversations with other investors, but you'll need to know them to communicate with professionals, vendors that you're gonna be working with to help you close your first real estate deal or potentially your next. So that being said, What's going on, guys? My name is Sam Kwok, one half of the Kwok Brothers. I'm a real estate investor, serial entrepreneur. My brother and I have dedicated our lives in helping aspiring real estate investors close their first real estate deal in as early as three to six months and allow them to close it profitably. So with that being said, let's go get started. Some vocabularies and terminologies that you need to know. Of course, this video will not be an exhaustive list. Uh, we'll actually give you guys a downloadable list glossaries that you need to absolutely know to be in the world of investing in real estate and to communicate with other investors as well. So you guys can go check that out down below in the resources and we'll have plenty more resources down below so you guys can go Check it out. So the first thing that you need to absolutely know is the term ARV. I mentioned that a little bit earlier, but ARV stands for after repair value. Now, this is simply an estimate of what the value of the property is going to be after you've done all the repairs, renovations to a property. Now, this is super duper important, especially if you're getting into wholesaling or fix and flips. Also important to uh, rental investments as well, but especially hugely important when it comes to fix and flips, because this is where it all starts. Mathematically, you need to know your ARV to then calculate your uh, repair costs and then ultimately getting to what your ideal purchase price could be. So ARV, estimate of the property value after you've done all your repairs and renovations to uh, improve the property and get the property appreciated. The other uh, definition you need to absolutely have is um, appreciation. Now, I know this is an obvious one for some of you, but there's two sides of this, of this coin. The first def definition that a lot of people know about uh, in terms of economic definition of appreciation is uh, supply, you know, whether the supply goes down or demand goes up, an asset appreciates, right? There's an increase of price of a given asset uh, because of the sheer forces of supply and demand. But in also real estate, there's something called forced appreciation, which is uh, kind of like what we talked about with Airbnb. When you uh, do a forced appreciation, it's by you know repairing, renovating, or improving the condition of that real estate. Therefore, it also increases the, the value, right? You're, you're force, forcefully appreciating the value of the property through uh, some of these material renovations and repairs that you're going to be doing to the property. So that's another term that you absolutely need to know. I'm looking at the list here so I can go by one, one by one. The other uh, vocabulary is cap rate or capitalization rate especially important in the world of commercial uh, real estate as well as investing in multifamily. Capitalization rate, also known as cap rate, is taking your net operating income, also known as your NOI, which we'll explain in just a sec, and dividing it by the fair market value of the property. Now, you can do some different math here to determine what the net income should be, or you can use the cap rate to also determine what the uh, value of the property should be. So uh, cap rate is very important in the world of investing in commercial or multifamily. Uh, again, to calculate cap rate, you take the NOI, net operating income, divided by the value of the property. Now, how might you come up with the value of the property? Well, you can do NOI divided by the cap rate, and that also gives you the value of the property as well. So it's got multi-use in terms, uh, in terms of determining what the NOI should be or determining what the value of the property should be. So definitely know what this is because it's going to be mentioned a lot. Okay. Now, another one is DSCR, debt service coverage ratio. Now, again, also related to multifamily and commercial real estate, but this is a ratio to calculate uh, basically from the lender's perspective, can you make your mortgage payments, your financing payments on time? Now, DSCR itself is calculated using taking the NOI, dividing it by the annual financing payment. So it's actually annual uh, yearly NOI divided by annual yearly uh, financing payments, total financing payments you make. So let's say, for example, your NOI, your, uh, your annual net operating income is $100,000, right? You take the $100,000 divided by, let's say you have a mortgage payment equal to $100,000 again. So what you'll have is a debt service coverage ratio of one, $100,000 of net operating income and $100,000 of 
uh, financing payment. So one to one, right? They're, they're, they're equal. Well, what if it change it? What if we change it and say you have one hundred twenty five thousand dollars of net operating income and only hundred thousand dollars of mortgage financing payment? Now you have a ratio of one point two five. Right, if you do the math, and that's typically where the banks want you to be when it comes to you know you securing a commercial loan or financing, uh, especially for multifamily and commercial. So that's another term to also know and remember uh, when it comes to investing in those types of deals. Another vocabulary that you should know, and this is more of a banking term, not necessarily a real estate term. Uh, I guess it is, but that that is LTV, loan to values. Some of you already know this because maybe you've gotten a mortgage for your home or in other types of scenarios. But an LTV is a calculation of how much loan do you have or do you need uh, against a value of a property. So if you have a value of property of hundred thousand dollars. And um, the bank or the lender says, hey, we can give you a 90% loan-to-value loan. That means the bank is willing to give you $90,000 loan against a $100,000 property. So loan-to-value is very important to know, especially when you're having a conversation with a lender or a banker uh, when getting financing. So definitely something you need to know, uh, LTV, loan-to-value. Uh, that's a vocabulary you now. Okay, NOI, I've mentioned this a couple times throughout the last few minutes here, but NOI stands for net operating income. Now, this is very, very important because as I mentioned, you're going to use the NOI to not only uh, calculate uh, cap rates, also DSCR, but there's going to be other types of calculations you're going to do using the NOI. So NOI is calculated using your total gross income, right? Whether it's rent coming in, laundry income, internet income that you're generating from multifamily and subtract all the operational expenses like insurance, maintenance, management fees, repairs that you do, utilities, snow removal, landscaping, right? Everything that goes on to operate the building, and that is your NOI. Now, what's not included in your NOI is gonna be your financing payment, which is your principal and interest payments. That is not factored into the NOI number. So that's one mistake that I see a lot of people. They factor in uh, financing, and that obviously is not part, or should not be part of the NOI number. But very, very important for you to know how to calculate the NOI, because again, uh, you're gonna need the NOI number to factor the and calculate the uh, uh, DSCR, you're going to need it to calculate cap rate. So very, very important that you get that right. And then the last one I'll kind of leave you guys with, at least for this video. And again, I'll have an exhaust, more of a, a, a full comprehensive list for you guys uh, down below. And that is REO, uh, also known as RIO. And uh, I know some people like to call it OREO, right? REO property. REO simply means is that it's a property owned by the bank. Now, technically, the real estate owns itself. That's why it's called real estate owned. Uh, that's what REO stands for. But uh, REO are simply banks that um, pos took possession of a property because of a foreclosure or maybe the property owner surrendered the property uh, called uh, Didi and Lou. And uh, a lot of times the bank banks will seize and, and homeowners will forfeit the property and it will essentially belong to the bank. Uh, but in technicality says that real estate kind of owns itself in, in a way. Uh, but a lot of banks have REO portfolios, which they you know manage, take care of, pay for all the expenses. And then a lot of times banks want to sell these off through either auctions or private sales. Uh, they happen quite a bit, especially in a time where the economy is not doing well or it's the aftermath of a recession or a crash, or the case might be. So that's another term you should have. Again, these are some vocabularies that you need to know. There are, are way more that you need to know. And, and don't worry about trying to remember everything. Um, one of my best... Um, advice to you guys when it comes to remembering some of these vocabulary is regularly use them, right? Use them uh, in conversations with other real estate investors. Join a forum, join a Facebook group like uh, what we have. We have a Facebook group that you can join where you can have conversations using these vocabularies, terminologies, and that will help you kind of um, help stick, you know, get these vocabularies to stick in your head uh, so you can remember them uh, when you need them the most. So that being said, hope this video kind of give you some uh, ideas, different vocabularies that you need to know and have uh, to at least have conversations with professionals, other real estate investors, and so on. So that being said, check out some of the other real estate investing videos that we have on our YouTube channel and our Facebook profile. Check it out. Hope this video was helpful. And if it did, subscribe, share this video with other people, and we'll see you in another video. Take care.